Hi everyone, my name is Barami. I'm a member of Group B, and here we have Sienna and Taylor uh, present you the analysis of equity across high school. Um, we are going to do the analysis on Granite Hill High School and El Cajon High School. They both under the um, Grossmont Union High School District. And first we are going to look at these community data. There are 128,014 population in um, El Cajon. And looking through this, we see that the median income in the El Cajon and Granite Hill it shows significantly different, so significant difference between 14, 46,000 $374 versus the $116,146. And here's a little bit of information about the two high school. They are located only two blocks uh, apart. And with Granite Hill High School, there were 2,253 students enrolled in 2018 and 2019. And we have 1,689 1, students enrolled in El Cajon High School. And here we have the enrollment per ethnic city. We have the majority of the student uh, white with the 51% and the second population with uh, Hispanic with the 37%. And in El Cajon High School, we do also have the majority uh, white with the 40.5% and Hispanic with the uh, 43.7%. We also wanted to look at the English learner. Here we have in Granite, high, Granite Hill High School, we have 151 students as an English learner and, uh, and 603 English learner in El Cajon High School. We also want to look at the different uh, of enrollment by subgroup. For Granite Hill, we have 4.6% are English learners, whereas we have 43.7% are English learner in El Cajon Valley. For social economically disadvantaged in Granite Hill, we have 47.7% compared to 94% in El Cajon Valley High School. Here we have the ethic program that uh, these two offer. We do see the significant difference of number of programs that the uh, a grant, where Granite Hill High School, there's a lot of uh, program that being offered for a student, but we only have about nine uh, program that offer in El Cajon High School. So my name is Siona and I'm gonna take over the sides with um, the school programs provided at Granite Hills High School. Um, compared to El Cajon Valley High School. Looking at the Granite Hills programs, you see a lot more programs provided for um, higher education, whereas El Cajon, they do give um, advantages for children to uh, go to higher education, um, depending on the AP courses where um, you can get college credit out of the way um, and an, a GPA boost. But compared to Granite Hills, you have a lot more that can maybe become a niche for certain people um, in their careers or um, just provide a better um, college application. Um, looking at the faculty staff demographics between the two, um, the biggest uh, population at both high schools is um, white with Hispanic being the second biggest, um, African-American, um, being about the same, Pacific Islander as the same, and then you have a 14, um, per, 14 people at the school who um, prefer not to give their um, ethnicity out at Granite Hills High School. Um, looking at the graduation, graduation statistics between both schools, um, the biggest one is at Granite Hills High School with 86%, while El Cajon has um, overall 70%. 
which um, is very surprising because both schools um, are in the same school district and only two blocks away. So it really brings attention to um, what's not being um, provided for students at El Cajon High School, that they're not being successful. Um, this is just, um, these are the Granite Hills High School graduation stats broken down by race with um, white being the biggest um, majority of graduating students and Hispanic being the second. Um, for El Cajon, broken down by race, we have um, white again being the biggest demographic that is graduating, Hispanic being the second, and um, African American being 30, and um, Asia being 14% or 14 people. Um, for the free and reduced lunch, Granite Hills High School has 50% of students qualifying for free and reduced lunch. Well, El Cajon has um, 90%. These schools are only two blocks away, as I mentioned before, and with a big population of students um, qualifying for free and reduced lunch um, speaks to the, the level of, um, not the level, but um, the, the population being um, a, a, a more lower income area compared to uh, Granite Hill High School individuals. Um, so taking a look at these um, graphs, it's the English language arts literacy and mathematics for Granite Hills. Um, the percentage of students who take in the test um, at, at a level of 55.55% and for mathematics being 41.62%. Um, these are all really high achievement um, level percentages at Granite Hill um, with it majorly being um, English speaking. For the alternate, um, for English language, we have 45.45% and mathematics being 36.36%. Um, these are still very high um, compared to El Cajon. Um, English is the dominant language, but even with the alternative um, test, students are still scoring at pretty high levels. Um, for El Cajon, um, we have the for English language arts, we have 27.63% and math mathematics being 10.24%. So this is a big change from Granite Hills um, compared to El Cajon for their um, achievement test. And for the alternate, um, for people who are not um, native English speaking, um, we were not able to retrieve this data just because of how few of students took the test um, or just didn't release the data. Um, this speaks to um, the, maybe the programs available at their school for non-English um, or non-native English speakers, um, the help that they're getting um, in both English and mathematics. Because um, even at um, Granite Hills, they were still scoring um, pretty high numbers where El Cajon, there wasn't um, enough students to even compress some data. Um, for the AP tests at Granite Hills, um, half of them are passing their test um, with each year. Um, besides 2018, um, are all pretty high uh, number of people passing their exams. Um, and I, Oh, is this you, Taylor? Oh. Mm. And then for the AP test for El Cajon High School, um, you can see the line, so the graph in blue, shows that there's a lower level of students who are passing um, the test at El Cajon Valley compared to the district rate. Um, and then you can see the number of students is also lower um, than a lot of the other um, districts or the high schools as well. And then going into the suspension rate for each of the schools, uh, but starting with Granite Hills, um, you can see on this graph that there is a total suspension numbers for um, whites is going to be 37. And the next largest group is going to be the Hispanic group of 21 suspensions. Um, this is about 
there's about 83% of the Hispanics who get only one suspension, um, but 16% of them are going in with or are having multiple suspensions, whereas the um, whites have an 84% for one suspension, so pretty close, but there is a less uh, percent for multiple suspensions going forward. Um, but I do want to bring the attention up to the African Americans, where they do have a low percentage or low number of suspensions. They also have a lower count of students, um, but they have the highest amount or the highest percent of suspensions for multiple cases. So multiple African Americans out of the 66 that are enrolled are getting suspended more than once. And this is a continuation of the previous graph. It shows a little bit more of the overall um, enrollment percentage for the suspension for Granite Hills. And then going into El Cajon High School. So same thing, the white and Hispanic are gonna be your top dominant um, groups. And Hispanic having 41, whites having 37. Um, but I also want to bring, again, the attention to the African-American group and their total number of students, as well as the percentage of students who are being suspended multiple times, um, along with the percentage of students that being suspended at least once, being over 50% um, for the one suspension and almost 40% for the multiple suspensions, whereas the other two race or ethnicities are only they're under 15%, so a lot lower rate for multiple suspensions. Continuing on again, this is just an overall uh, percentage of the suspension rates per ethnic group. And then looking into the parent education levels between the two schools, um, the two graphs are a little different, but the um, basic information that is provided is that Granite Hills High School has almost 100 percent or it's about 75 percent of their parents have a high school graduate or a high school graduate along with completion of some college. And there's five percent of them who actually have a bachelor's degree or higher. Whereas El Cajon High School, their most recent year, which was 2018-19, they had a 31% of parents who completed a high school diploma or got their high school diploma and only 14% of which completed some college, 9% of them being college graduates. So there's a lot level, a lot lower amount of parents who are completing a higher level of educations between the two schools. Um, that's also a you know, an issue that we look at when students are trying to complete high school, because if they think, oh, my parents aren't going, so I don't have to go, they're going to have that mindset. Whereas if their parents did go to college, they kind of want to go along, um, ideally in the same path. And then the parent engagement. So Granite House has um, a lot more engagement with the school um, as far as the student success with back to school nights, uh, counselor meetings, PTA, um, VP or VIP meetings, um, as well as access to um, parents who have disabilities or translation um, services for those families that speak um, Spanish or other languages. El Cajon High School parents meet with the principal only a few times a year to give input and feedback that but they also have a parent mentor program that works closely with a refuge settlement agency um, to help new coming families adjust. And then all the communications that do go home with the students are in three different languages, English, Spanish, and Arabic. Um, this is something to look at with the comparing the two different schools with being only two blocks away where Granite Hills does not send home documentation in Arabic. It's only English and Spanish. Uh, equity. So with Granite Hills, uh, with the different variables that we've shown so far, suspension rates, test scores, and the student programs, Granite Hills seems to have a more successful student population, um, not only meaning that they're going to graduate high school, but they're most likely going to um, pursue a higher education, um, going to either a community college or a four-year university. 
And with El Cajon High School, the graduation rate was slightly lower in comparison. Um, and their school didn't provide as many programs for those students to be able to have that push or desire to graduate or move on to a higher education compared to Granite Hills. So in summary, kind of in conclusion with all the slides that the three of us have provided you, um, the data that was provided shows that more programs, more guidance support, parental support, allow these students at Granite Hills to be more successful and move on to higher education, as I stated on the previous slide. And then same with El Cajon High School. There's a lower graduation rate along with lower test scores. So the percentage of students to move on to higher education is a lot lower in comparison to Granite Hills, um, as well as the guidance and parental support doesn't seem to be the same level that Granite Hills ha has to offer, um, both being what the, the school gives to students along to the parents being there to support their students. And those are the two schools that we compared and thank you.